Alright, so part two. Sorry, I'm only allowed 15 minutes on this app that I have, so I had to move on to the other video. Um, so after we change this number to scientific notation, you can now divide like normal. So I'm going to use my calculator here to divide 1.35 and 1.5. So 1.35 divided by 1.5 is 0.9. And then 10 to the fourth power divided by 10 to the third, you have the same base, so you're going to keep your base of 10. And then remember, dividing with exponents, you just subtract. So 4 minus 3 gives you 1. And you can put that 1, or you don't have to, since 10 to the first power is the same thing as 10. But that is my answer. All right, and then the last one on this page, um, an airplane travel 5.7 times 10 to the second miles per hour for 1.4 times 10 to the first hours. How far did the airplane travel? Write your answer in scientific notation. So if they traveled for this long, for this many miles, and we are trying to figure out how far altogether did the plane travel, we are going to multiply these numbers. So we have 5.7. times 10 to the second power, and we're going to multiply that times 1.4 times 10 to the first power. So again, uh, multiplying and dividing with exponents is so much easier because we don't need same base to the same power. That's only with adding and subtracting. So you can just multiply like normal here. So multiply your numbers, 5.7 times 1.4 you get 7.98 and then uh, multiply your exponents so we have a base of 10 and then we add our exponents since we are multiplying so 2 plus 1 is 3 so my answer is 7.98 times 10 to the third power okay um, also up here guys, I just realized that this number is not between 1 and 10, so my apologies for that. Um, I don't want to create a whole nother video just to fix this one mistake, so I'm just going to fix it real fast up here. Um, so remember this needs to be a number between 1 and 10, so since it's 0.9, I need to make it bigger by moving it 1 to the right. So since I made it bigger, I need to subtract 1 from my exponent here. So if I take 1 minus 1, that just gives me 0, which remember, anything to the 0 power is just equal to 1. So my answer here should just be 9. Okay, so that's my fault. I forgot that this number needs to be between 1 and 10. So I needed to move my decimal point to the right one. And then because of that, I had to subtract 1 from my exponent, so you should have just gotten 9. Okay. Now on to the second page. So select all the expressions that are equivalent to x to the third times x to the negative fifth. So you have the same base and you're multiplying. So remember the rule is you just add your exponents. So 3 plus negative 5 is negative 2. And if you realize x to the negative 2 is a, so you will circle a. But also remember we want positive exponents. So since x to the negative 2 is not happy, this is technically over 1. So since he's not happy upstairs, you need to take him downstairs to where now he will be happy. So now it is 1 over x to the second, which is also c. All right, uh, number 14, fill in a number to make the statement true. So we are multiplying. So remember the rule is you're going to add your exponents to get your final answer here. So 4 plus what will give me 10? Well, 4 plus 6 gives me 10, so that should be my answer. All right, number 15, plot the following numbers on a number line. So the square root of 20, uh, we taught you guys how to approximate. So if you guys remember, uh, the square root of 20 falls in between the perfect squares of the square root of 16 and the square root of 25. 
So we do know that this number will be in between those square roots. And the square root of 16 is 4. And the square root of 25 is 5. So we know that the square root of 20 has to be between 4 and 5. So as long as you put a point here, anywhere between 4 and 5, I will count you right. Okay. And then you can also double check on your calculator. So if I were to take the square root of 20, it does give me 4.47, which is 4.5 pretty much. So it does fall right in between them. All right, this next symbol is pi. Remember, pi equals 3.14. So as long as I plot pi very close to 3, I am good to go. Uh, next one, 2.349872. Well, you pretty much just need to look at this 2.3. So it's going to be close to 3, but not all the way halfway. So this would be about right there. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect, just close enough, okay? And then this last one, square root of 5. So the square root of 5 falls in between the perfect squares of 1. Nope, sorry. 4 and 9, and it's actually closer to the 4 here. So the square root of 4 is 2, square root of 9 is 3. So the square root of 5 will be a number like 2 point, probably 2 something, but then there is a negative sign before it, so this will actually be a negative 2 point whatever it is. So the square root of 5 will be somewhere over here. And you can always double check it with your calculator. So square root of 5 is 2.23, so I was right, it was 2.2 something. But then that negative sign just makes it a negative 2.23. Okay. So four points for that, for correctly plotting all of them on the number line. Uh, next one, 16, which of the following is closest to point F on the number line below? So looking down here, so we can use our calculator. So if I were to take the square root of 7, that gives me about 2.6. So looking at point F, this is about 3.5, so it's not going to be A. Uh, looking at B, you have a whole number of 1 and then a fraction, so this will be somewhere between 1 and 2, which is not close to F. So, so far it's not A or B. Uh, square root of 15, if I were to plug it in my calculator, I get 3.87, which is close to F. So right now C is looking pretty promising, but let's just double check the last one. Uh, next one is 35%. Remember to change this to a decimal. You can just move it two times to the left. So 35% is the same thing as 0.35, which would be all the way over here. So my answer should be C. All right, next one, estimate the value of three times the square root of 10 to the nearest integer. So using your calculator, I would first take the square root of 10 to see what that will give me. And that's about 3.16. And then when there is a number outside of it, remember that just means that it's multiplying. So if I were to take that square root of 10, multiply it times three, I get about 9.5. So if they wanted me to round it to the nearest integer here, uh, they don't have a 10, but they do have a 9. So 9.4 would be rounded down to the 9 here. So it should be C. All right, uh, 17, or no, 18, sorry. Fill in the blank, 2 times square root of 15, 3 times square root of 6. So we will be doing the same thing as we just did for 17. Um, so I'm going to take the square root of 15 first. <clears throat> and then this number out front means I'm multiplying by it. So I can multiply by 2. And I get about 7.7 .7 for this one. Then I will do the same thing with 3 times the square root of 6. So my square root of 6 here is about 2.4. Multiply that times 3, 
and I get about 7.34. So which one's bigger? Well, our sevens are the same, but moving to our tenths place, seven's bigger than three, which means that two to the 15th power is bigger than three to the sixth, which means that it's A. All right, next one, number 19. How many square roots does 49 have and explain? So 49 is a perfect square root, correct? If I were to take the square root of 49, it is going to give me that plus or minus 7, okay? And there is only one square root of 49 that will give me that plus or minus 7. So all that they want you guys to put here is how many square roots does square root of 49 have? Well, there's only one square root because it's a perfect square. Because 7 times 7 gives you 49 and negative 7 times negative 7 gives you 49. So it's just one square root because it's a perfect square. Alright, and the last page here. So between which two whole numbers is the square root of 40 located? So think of your perfect squares. Uh, if we had the square root, so I can even list them up here. Square root of 1, square root of 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49. And I could keep going, but I could stop there. So the square root of 40 falls right in between the square root of 36 and square root of 49 of my perfect squares. So what two whole numbers would that be? Well, square root of 36 is 6, square root of 49 is 7. So square root of 40 is going to fall between the whole numbers of 6 and 7. All right, uh, number 21, select all the following solutions to the equation. So remember, you want to get x by itself, and the opposite of squaring something is taking the square root of it. So taking the square root and squaring will just give me x, and then the square root of 63 would be my plus or minus, I can use my calculator here, is 7.9, and they're telling me to round it to the nearest integer, so 7.9 is about 8. So this would be x is equal to plus or minus 8, which means that my answers are A and D. All right, uh, same thing for 22. So this time you're just going to solve it like normal. If you want to get x by itself, the opposite of squaring something is taking the square root. So you'll take the square root on both sides. This is now just x, which is what we wanted. And then the square root of 81 is plus or minus 9. Next, solve the following equation. Round to the nearest tenth. So same thing. Opposite of squaring something is taking the square root. You may use your calculator. So if I were to take the square root of 243, it's telling me to round to the nearest tenth. So this is the one number after the decimal. 8 is bigger than 5, so I need to round this up to a 6. So my answer should be plus or minus 15.6. And then the last one, you'll do the same exact thing. So opposite of squaring something is tank of the square root on both sides. Then if I were to take the square root of 80, Again, it's telling me to round to the nearest integer this time. So the square root of 80 would give me pretty much plus or minus 9. And you can know that too because the square root of 81 is 9, which is super close to 80. Okay. So that's your study guide. All right. If you guys have any questions over anything, please send me an email so that I can help you guys. Um, you guys can go back and watch this video multiple times to see how I explained it uh, to help you guys as well. But Cohort 1's test is on Monday and Cohort 2's test is on Tuesday. So please, please, please study over the weekend and email me with your questions. Thanks.